G'day legends, welcome to Beyond Tape, a podcast where we talk to legends in the mountain bike industry, mainly focusing on the Australian scene, but we do venture overseas every now and then. Um, as you may have seen, we are wrapping up this podcast and we've got about three more episodes roughly to go. Um, I did want to end it with a bang, so we've uh, we've got Zolly, um, Zoltan Barbarossi, uh, one of the OG filmmakers from well, 30 years ago today, um, Volatile Visions was a huge thing here in SA and, you know, seeing the sport on TV or on aeroplanes or a lot of uh, places like that actually came from here in Adelaide and from, from here in Australia back in the day and, and Zoli was a part of that. So we had a really good chat. <clears throat> Before we get into that, though, let's talk about some sponsors. Without these guys, this podcast wouldn't have been able to go for the last six years. A big one being tailored trails. These guys offer the most uh, tailored experience when it comes to traveling to Taz and having a great time on your bike. At the moment, they are offering um, a bunch of tours around um, Hardline. Uh, so if there's an EWS down there, they'll help out with that, you know, Enduro Jam, stuff like that. They'll really tailor the experience to those events. Um, if you're also just a couple of people that want to get down there and have a good time, Um, You can also take a part of the Taylor Trails experience where you can join up with a few other people as well and and kind of meet some new friends, ride with some new buddies and have a grand time on one of their joint adventures. So make sure you hit up Taylor Trails for the best time in Tassie. If you're looking for a rad bike, make sure you hit up Trek Bikes. I've been absolutely loving my Trek Fuel EX. Um, Does everything I need it to. Super strong, does everything. There's not much I can say about that bike that that's bad, to be honest. It's it's just amazing. It does its thing. When I'm riding my bike, I love to be in Frank Mountain Bike Apparel. Uh, during the wet weather, I've been loving their new um, new jacket. It's just killer. Works. Keeps water off my back. Keeps me cool. Um, it's sick. Shred Bike Care has been keeping my bike clean. Um, loving their stuff still. Fist handwear, keeping my hands protected, lead out sports, best tools in the biz. Absolutely loving my Pedro stuff from those guys. Capped out caps, keep my stem looking good, and Oak Clear, keeping my eyes protected. Anyway, that's enough of my dribble. As usual, go grab a beer, grab a water, grab a wine, grab whatever makes you happy and enjoy this episode. Rad, you happy to get started? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> feels awkward with these mics in front of you a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, who are you and, and what do you kind of do, I guess, or what have you done in the past? I, I'm i Zoltan Borbassi. Um, in my regular day job, I'm a pool builder. Um, but a long time ago, I started uh, Volatile Visions, which was filming mountain bike and BMX from the early days. It started about 94. I just celebrated a 30-year anniversary. Uh, even though I haven't been doing it that whole time, um, I've, I've got a spark back to kind of revisit it and look at it again. <laughs> um, I might just get you to put your mic just a bit closer. Closer, get yeah, in there. That's all good. Um, 30 years, like for most of my listeners, they might not have – well, I was six, like when you, when you started filming and stuff, but – can you give us a brief description of what it was like starting, I guess, starting mountain biking and, and filming and everything back then? Because that was the start of it in Adelaide, right? It pretty much, look, I was, I was actually an outsider. Like, okay. I wasn't part of the mountain bike community. I, I played soccer all my life mm-hmm. uh, and finished that and had bought myself a video camera to go on holidays with the missus. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for, a, I'd stopped playing soccer. I was looking for a sport to do. Um, I did windsurfing for a bit okay. and I used to get carpal tunnel, like my mm-hmm. hands would lock up, so I couldn't keep doing that. And then I got into, like, bought a mountain bike and that was when they had first had suspension four. So yeah, okay. there was yeah. not, there wasn't just a road bike, it was a mountain bike and it had suspension forks. Mm-hmm. And I think they were, it was like a GT or something. And I think the forks were like $1,000 for like, some elastoma, yeah, elastoma yep. four hooks or something like that. I saved up my money and bought that, but that was very early days. Um, and then just happened along to go, heard about this downhill race. Um, mm-hmm. there were some cross country races at the start, 
Yeah, Adelaide Mountain Bike Club had organised cross country. True. That's yeah, yeah. what they had, and a bit of maybe a couple of trials events. Uh, mm. And then they had a downhill at Marble Hill. Yep. And yep. I went out there, and that was my first meeting of it. Like that was my first time that I saw. You know, Gary Patterson was there. Later, I realised yeah, that right. was Gary, yeah, and that yep. was Matt Holmes. They had this bus there. Mm-hmm. Dave Mott. They'd set it up. Um, but yeah, I was new to the sport. I wasn't a mountain biker. Um, yep. I just happened to have a camera. And started filming stuff, and it kind of went from there. What was it? Um, do you remember what your camera you were filming on? Like, obviously, you were. It was a mini VHS camera, That's like a right, Panasonic, yeah. like mini VHS. So you'd have this little little tape, and you'd put that tape into a VHS tape. Yeah. Um, okay. And and that would play the video. So yeah, like a <laughs> mini VHS tape, and then that moved on to a Hi8 tape, and then a digital tape and yep. then uh and digital <laughs> were you just um uh, forgive my ignorance but were you carrying multiple tapes around with you to film on or yeah um yeah so sorry my dog is here just paying attention to the stuff as well <laughs> um yeah so you just buy like the time you might get a maybe a 30 minute tape or a 45 minute tape um and that would, but you know, you record seconds at a time. Like at first, you record too much. You record three minutes, and you think everything mm-hmm. you're filming is great. And then you look back at it, and you go, "Yeah, two minutes and fifty eight seconds were crap, and there was two <laughs> seconds of good stuff in there." Yep. Um, she's not chewing those, Kaya. Ah, oh, she is. It's all good. Get on your bed. <laughs> that's me old. That's me old. Um. <laughs> Okay, that's all good. She can chew on that all she wants. My dog's just chewing on cords here. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, little tapes. And you'd take a, a tape and you just – one would generally be enough. It was the batteries okay. that was the, the yeah, problem. Yeah, true. Yeah. Batteries was the, the, the hard thing to mm. make last. Um, but, yeah, you just lug this camera. And no one else really – I think Holmes had a video camera back then. Yeah, okay. And there's a few people taking photos. Yeah. Um, but it was for riders, so – Yeah. All the guys involved in the sport were riders. Mm-hmm. Like that was, that's how come maybe I was able to step away from it because I wasn't a rider. Because if you're riding, yeah. all you want to do is ride. You don't want to stop True. and take photos. You don't want to stop and take a mm. video of what you're doing. You just want to keep riding. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so maybe because I came from outside of it, I was able to step away from riding and stop myself riding and actually film stuff. That's unreal. You know? Yeah. It's like to go back to what you were saying though, but like you have Gary Patterson, you've got Matt Holmes, like Marshy, like these guys all set the foundation for and yourself, I guess, as well. Well Definitely. even Marshy got look and look, I can't claim any responsibility to it. You know, I was a I was a passenger and even mm. you know, Marshy we came a bit later. There was okay. Darren Moore. Like True. To, yep. to me, I think it was Gary Patterson heavily involved and and Darren there I think there was another race in Adelaide before then. Or well, the year before, 93, a group of guys had gone to Buller okay. to do a mountain bike event yeah, yeah. from South Australia. Yeah. Um, but to race again at Threadbar, I think the way the story goes was that we wanted to form an actual downhill mountain bike club. So I think, and even in the stuff I've been posting out, some of the feedback is I think South Australia is maybe the first mountain bike downhill club, maybe even in the world. Mm, it'd be uh, out there for like sure. There's mountain bike clubs. Yeah. And they were for cross country and for mountain mm. bike, but there was specifically a downhill mountain bike club. Yeah. Um, and look, those guys would know the story behind it. But yeah, there was a heap of the, it was mostly couriers. They were mountain, they were mountain bike couriers. Yeah. So yeah. it was the courier crew. Yeah. Um, you know, there's Adam Ross and Sadler and, and yeah. there's a heap of different guys. Yeah. Um, right. kind of, I don't know if that should be up there. All right, try again. Oh, we tried. It's all good. Um, yeah, you were saying like the first downhill club in the country, Australia. Yeah, look, I, I rocked up to this event um, at Marble Hill on a Saturday, I think it was. Um, they had this bus. It was literally, I don't know, four or five turns, you know. It was a 50-metre straight with a right-hand turn, then a hairpin, <laughs> then a hook left, and then – down a little chute and over a jump that was knee high. Yeah. That, that was my introduction to it. And I'd never jumped. I'd, so I started riding at about 21. So I wasn't into bikes. Mm. I wasn't a bike rider. I had no 
real skills or anything yep. like that. And I, there was this jump and I jumped it and I crashed. Yeah. And Holmes had his camera set up there and had this perfect footage of me crashing. And then as I was looking back at my stuff, I recorded over the footage. So I actually oh, no. had yeah. – I've got footage of me falling in love with mountain biking and as, mm. and I totally stuffed my knee up like I hurt myself really badly. <laughs> Came back the next day on crutches uh, and filmed the the A grade guys. Like the next yep. day was the was the, the big event yeah. with like Ben Whitlock and Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trying to think of who the guys were, like Sadler and Felix and mm -hmm. uh, okay, it was mountain bike couriers yep. and they're just starting to get they weren't even proper downhill bikes, they were just a mountain no. bike. Yeah. Like knobbly tires. Well, and a thick frame, so that classed it as a mountain bike. Did downhill bikes even? That's that, that was, was one my bike. that was my yeah. introduction to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So what I, were you just hooked like straight away? Yeah, straight yeah. away, straight away. I was hooked. You know, I was hurt. <laughs> I'm crutching. <laughs> I'm going back there and trying to film footage. I think Ed Verco was there. I think I got some great footage of Ed Verco crashing. Mate, I don't know if that was the first one or that was maybe a little bit later. But yeah, I just happened to have a video camera. Oh, again, I didn't study. Filming, filming and all that. Yeah. I just like filming stuff for whatever reason. And it wasn't like you could YouTube out a video. No. Or like, no, it, so it took a long time. You just gather mm. up the footage and you just keep keep adding more tapes to it. And yeah. then you'd try and make a little edit or something like recording onto mum's VHS tape. Like <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. very primitive, you know, yeah. a red, yellow and a white cable True, between yeah. two machines. Yep. And press pause and press record and. See what you get. So that's how you're cutting the films together back then? Yeah, was like, the yeah. start. I think I started like that. Yeah, right. So you'd have to go – so we had a mini VHS camera, I think, and you'd have to literally just – even to transfer it to computer, you literally just press play and transfer it everything at once. You'd have yeah, to go through Yeah, this wasn't the, even to computer. No, no. Yeah, at this stage it wasn't even going to a computer. You had your TV screen, you had a VHS player, and that was it. That's there was no – it wasn't getting into a computer till. Quite a few years later, I had yeah. a little mixing desk and I could somehow record that. I had a little, like a screen to play it back on. Um, and then I had a little, oh, I can't remember one of the names. I, I bought some, like some of the equipment was expensive. Mm -hmm. Like um, my, my grandma, she actually lent me the money to- Yeah, okay. To, to, yeah, right. It was expensive, yeah. That was expensive stuff. What um, was- um I guess, like, did you have any creative passion before that, or was it? Well, I suppose so I had the passion, blue. but yeah. I had no idea. I yeah, don't, okay. I don't, well, I don't, I don't know. I just did it because I liked it, you know, yeah. and just tried to do it, you know, put two machines together and um, record some video and then put some music over the top of it. I used to, you mm. know, I used to love music. Okay. Um, I used to love love music. So, uh, and I thought, well, just watching well, mountain bike footage. One. Yeah. Just back playing back by itself isn't that exciting yeah. you know it was yeah. pretty rough you turn a corner and you whatever you don't look that great but oh, you put a bit of music over the top it makes you maybe makes you look a little bit better exactly yeah. um so music was a big thing so yeah. yeah then you put music over the top of the footage and mm -hmm. you kind of made a little video clip and yeah and maybe that's how i that's unreal you know, that's how i thought of it what were you doing with the clips because like, uh, well, obviously now we've got Instagram, we've got YouTube, we've got oh this yeah TikTok, like, you know everything. Like how, man, it's so easy to do stuff now. It's so oh, easy to yeah. make something so simple look so brilliant so mm. fast. Yeah, back then it took it took a lot of time. Yeah, mm. you'd record there was there'd have to be the race first. There's only. True. One race in a year or, yeah, you know, yeah, right. or yeah, three yeah. races True. in. Yeah. So just to have something that was kind of exciting or worth mm. showing again, you know, yeah. and no one was good at anything then, you know, in a True. race scene, you know, made it look racy and people were trying fast and you might mm -hmm. crash or something. Crash was probably the best thing you could get. But yeah, True. Yeah, trying yeah. to make someone look fast, look fast, it's pretty hard on video, mm. you know, because- in the grand scheme of things, yeah, Marble Hill wasn't that fast. Well, that's it. Like we've we've got some of the fastest and best riders ever to come out of the country, and we've got hills. We've not got mountains. Like we've no, got these tiny. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the, the I mean, the, the youngers. We I say youngers, youngies are you know, there's Connor and Troy, but there's a next generation mm. well below them now as well. And yeah, Adelaide never had big hills, but we had some talented riders mm. for sure. And you've seen like a lot of them come up. Were you organising? 
Were you organising videos and stuff with people outside of the racing at a point? So you had Rishpeth and I've seen a few like of- that. They're a lot later, a lot later. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. I started like 94, 95. Mm. So look, no one even made videos then. There was a Mud Cows video. The first True, video yeah. before I'd made a video, I, I think I'd started, you know, I think I made the name and I just started mucking around with stuff yep. in, the, in the bedroom at home, you know. Just trying to do stuff, and I'd show me and and me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all the yeah. people that saw it, and then oh, make make a video. There were surf videos at the time. True, yeah. yeah. You know, it was surfing, but no one made mountain bike. Maybe videos. some ski and snow stuff. Yeah, as well. there would yeah. have been stuff. Yeah, yeah. Walden Miller would do this snow stuff, mm. and there was surfing, and then here's this new sport of mountain biking, and well, I hadn't seen it yet. Um, no, you know, no yeah. one's really seen it yet, and I got a camera, so I'll film it and make a mountain bike video. Yeah. But I didn't, you know, I knew it wasn't that great. Um, but, you know, I thought, well, surely us group mm. might want to see this again. And everyone used to be stoked seeing themselves in a video, you know. Well, it would take all year. You might make one in a year. Um, my first video was Hyper, and I released that in 95. I haven't been able to re-digitise that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I made that one in 95. I'd, I've, I've, I've got a way to replay it, um, mm -hmm. but I haven't been able to spit any of that footage out yeah, and that's see. you know that's the real early days mm. um i've got all my early little tapes the people have said look they might not replay they're that old the, yeah okay they might yeah. just be brittle and crumble mm. as soon as you press play mm. um but hopefully i can open that stuff up and then i've got all the raw tapes as well yeah like right. hundreds yeah. of hours of footage yeah it's like you say you're not you weren't that great but how will you not to get too deep, but how are you deciding that if you've got no one to compare yourself to at the time? Like, <laughs> well, I, I really didn't. Yeah. You know, there was uh, even, you know, Mud Cows didn't inspire me to make a movie. I was planning mm. on probably making a video. I mean, that's the place you can put something is make a video. Like, mm. I'd contact the bands. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew some people in the bands because I used to hang out at the surf clubs yeah, and all the rest of yeah. it. And then, you go to the shit, you get a CD, you yeah. ask the band, oh, numbskulls, yeah. do you want to put some music on this video? Oh, we had Mark of Kane, we had Hilltop Hoods. Like, Unreal. These, yeah. these, these guys that I just like their music and I asked them, I said, can I put your music on a video? Mm. I'm going to make a mountain bike video and they pretty much all said yeah. And uh, now they're featuring on like huge productions and, as well. And, and, and they've come a long way since then. Mm. You know, everyone's come a long since, way since then. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, just I don't know, just the talent and the skills. Like the musicians were just kind of as important as mm -hmm. the riders to me. Yeah, you know, I made bike videos, so I think it's about bikes. Um, but the music was just as equally important, I think. Well, it makes or breaks an edit, yeah, like, or a video. And then those bands get to have their song. More people get to hear their song and exactly. hear their music. And and guys today say, oh, I think of this song and I can picture this bit and all the rest. Of it. And I can do the same thing. Like yeah. It, um, it gave an opportunity for bands. Look, I didn't necessarily, it wasn't my favourite music. I wouldn't play mm. it in the cassette player with my Walkman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I wouldn't be playing that in my Walkman <laughs> all the time. But it was just good to have a variety of bands, like someone yeah. be just heavy and punk and then someone be more melodic and, mm. you know, instrumental. It was really good to, to have all that and throw it on a video and then the musicians get to get a bit See of it. extra airplay too. Yeah. You know? I think having a, a broad spectrum of music interest is very very important for anyone making video because you, you can miss out on so many tweaks to the video just because you're not exploring that type it, of stuff it can't right? always be intense and it no you, know, you can't always put slow motion in there and you know, <laughs> yeah you know. what um did you when did you start Getting out of SA and going to trips. Like you went to, did you go to Jindabyne with Grant and stuff well, like no, that? Well, no, I didn't get to Jindabyne, but okay. pretty much when the club formed. So the club formed in 94 as well. Mm. I think the club formed, I think it was about like April or May or something like that, like middle of the year. I registered the name in August, but I think they'd organised the club and then a trip to Threadbow, and I think that okay. was 94. Yep. So that was my first interstate trip. Like I literally f f went to this downhill race at Marble Hill and then within the next th three or four months, I think, yeah, right. um, they'd had this this trip to go interstate and go race bike into stuff. Oh, yeah, cool. I'll go and do that. That sounds yeah, okay. yep. like, like good fun. Yeah. So there's a heap of strangers. We got on this bus 
Sick. And we went to Threadbar. That's where I went. Mark met Marshy, and I saw Charles mm-hmm. for the first time. Yeah. And Darren Moore was on the bus. Whitlock, mm. Darren O'Grady, mm-hmm. stinky Darren O'Grady, yep. was eating all this healthy food, and he was, <laughs> was rancid. Dave Mott yeah. driving the bus, and Gary driving the bus. It was a really cool experience. And look, I didn't really know anyone. I didn't didn't know anyone. We met each other on the bus. And you uh, wouldn't know them the by the time you got to the three days, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and such a cool group of guys to, to do something like that with. Yeah, 100%. cool experience. And, and then, then from then on, I, we kept going. From then on, you'd go to a fair few nationals to try and yeah. video and just like, well, my filming South Australian people, no one cared about South Australian people. Like in the mount, in the bike yeah. scene, that's not where the good riders were. The good riders are in Sydney and mm-hmm. Melbourne, and that's where the, the hub of the sport kind of is and was. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, there's some guys in South Australia that are pretty bloody quick, yep. you know. Yeah. So you're trying to make a video and, and include the people from interstate and then maybe they, you know, might be interested to buy the video as well because True. maybe yep. they're in it. Yeah. A lot of it was putting people in a video. Everyone likes mm. to see himself. Back then, it was like the news, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, there wasn't anything happening really, was there? There was like AM, AMB might have been around at the time. They would have had magazines. There was magazine yeah. coverage. Yeah. There was free wheel. Um, True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Cloud and, and mm-hmm. there's mountain bike magazines. There's yep. probably a couple of them. Yeah. Um, but no but on video. television, yeah. like on, you know, th- there wasn't mountain biking. You wouldn't really see it on TV no. back then. But you, that would have been prime time for like running and a few of those other faster yeah, guys as yeah. well. Like that's yeah. That we come into that general. I used to live with Marshy. Came and ends up we become best mates and yep. we live together. Oh, and God. so we yep. we take all the. The photos of the magazines and our walls would be plastered with yeah. all of that. You know, Scott Sharples and Ronnie yeah, had just Sharples, won yep. over in the States. Like, Ronnie had become mm-hmm. like an Australian guy, had become the fastest guy in the world on a yeah. mountain bike, had beaten Villay, Villay. And, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. just like, oh man, this is fun. As if you can just do that. Yeah. And then just go and see him at races. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And But that generation of, you know, Ronnie and then the, the next guys that come through after him, Kavarix and Rennie mm-hmm. and. Sam Hill and yeah, a lot of lot of big names. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know at the time, it really made a difference to see, you know, how good some of these people can be and how True. pro they. It, it felt like they were just the super pro people. Although in the end, they were just just normal just guys. Yeah, they yeah. were just dudes. Yeah, but I don't know. In my eyes, and and in a lot of people's eyes, they, their names kind of meant something. You know, oh, they, exactly. They were, yeah, you're on the hill and. Oh, Oh, yeah, do this. I was lucky was enough good. to work with Sharples for about a year or so, and no one there knew like what he'd done in his career because he just didn't care. Like he never had that ego or never really showed anyone. Like I don't think what- man, n- none of them really seemed to. Really, I no. don't think any of them really. No, any exactly. of the good guys never really care. Like ma- maybe mountain biking is that sport where. Oh, I rode my mountain bike down the yeah. hill and I was faster than you. Right, yeah, yeah right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was almost like one of the hate, like probably the golden era of downhill, though, for, for a lot of Australians. Well, yeah, well, because my like the first event I went to was Threadbow, and that was you pretty much just rode down the fire road. True. They yeah. cut a little bit of single track through mm. some sections. They, they crossed some S's into the, the grassy hill. Yeah. But you pretty much rode down the fire track. So there's no big rocks. There's no big features. There was nothing probably bigger than knee high. True. I reckon the, the early tracks that I experienced. Yeah. And then as it progressed, the riders wanted to be more challenged. So they True. looked for more difficult terrain to ride mm. their bikes over. And then you started getting all the all the next courses that came after that, yeah, you know, expanding. And, and now look at what you got today. <laughs> now it's like, unreal. Like, like, literally 30 years ago, uh, you could ride a, get your bike in a chairlift, get to the top of the hill and you would ride down the fire road. Mm. And that was the best thing you Ever. could get. To. Yeah. I mean, you could do it at, here at Adelaide. You could mm. ride to Lofty and you could ride the fire into road track. Or yeah. you could ride, and that was a big buzz, but that lasted two minutes or yeah. whatever it might be. Well, like even now though, you go to Threadbow and riding that fire road to the truck is oh, so, so sketchy. Fast. Like <laughs> it was just, it was just flat out and yeah. fast, and and everything was high speed, and your bikes had no travel. Most people were on hardtails, you know. Mm. Suspension spikes started to come in, yeah, uh, and they start making the tracks a bit bit trickier. 
um, which we just and just that progression, just that level of progression at that stage. Everyone was pretty even. No one really had a better bike than than the next guy. You know, all yeah. bikes were equally all, as good or yeah. bad as each other. And we're reaching that again now. Like yeah. everything's just really damn good. I had foes. I had San Andreas. True. Some of those early yeah, yeah, brands yeah. like San Andreas would be on the hill, and it's like. Look at yep. that bike. That is just the most magical looking bike. Ridiculous, know? like 10 inches of travel, yeah. like 12 inches yeah. of travel things. That, yeah. yeah. And then there's a foes. Oh, he's got a foes. Like there'd literally be three of them mm. in the mountain. Like there'd be and like a people size. there and there'd be six just incredible bikes. And you see them and the size small would be just as tall as it was yeah. long. The, yeah. the weird looking. Yeah. yeah. And look, those riders probably could have ridden any bike fast. Um, mm. Advantages or disadvantages of them. We're, we're in the early stages back yeah. then. If if you could ride, you could probably ride anything. True. You know? Yeah. What was it? I guess like you might play this down a little bit, but you were kind of exposing that scene and that sport to a lot of people. Did it feel like that at the time? Like, for example, we would be in high school watching your videos. It was the only way we could watch what's going on in the country. Did you have like a sense of pride or were you like – stoked with what you were doing at the time or do you ever look I, back and say i did i showed this to the country i suppose i really had no idea who was mm. watching it you know True. like if i sold 100 videos mm. that that was a good result like i mean i made i think i made nearly 30 different movies like i've, I've checked back all That's the time unreal. it's like yeah i made a lot of movies yeah i did, I did a tv i did a lot of stuff mm. um but you know Maybe I didn't even sell. Maybe a good seller might have been a thousand videos around the world. Yeah, you know, at the time, a thousand people, uh, and that felt pretty cool. Um, but in general, for a few hundred videos here, there, some went to Melbourne. Oh, I always sold a hundred here, the hundred yeah. there. That that felt pretty good. But who in the end was watching it? I I didn't really know. I knew yeah, the no media, media group it. around yeah. us, and our mates would see it, and we'd have a laugh, and we're on the video, and that's great. But I had no real idea. Like now, as I'm coming back to it, you see some of the kids in the Groms. Mm. Oh, we watched you. And so now it gives me more of a buzz now. But back then, I, I didn't really have any idea who was watching it. Yeah. Well, there's no way to know, like, who's given you the video comment, to the uncle. You know, there's yeah. no, there's no view counter. Yeah. yeah, there's no view. There's no likes. You can't comment back on Instagram and, and see how many thumbs up you got. Back then, it's like you yeah. put it out there and, and then it was gone. But that you one know? videotape could be circulating a yeah, whole community. And and like you don't know that. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, and that's why I made the. That's why I sewed them into the cases. Okay. Because at the day you could the first video I made was intro, and that was in a VH, VHS tape mm. in a hard case, and you sold it to the bike shop, and yeah. the bike shop could they'd take the video and then everyone in the shop had to be like before they've sold the tape like the tape yeah, yeah. went around everyone in the shop first and everyone. Yeah. Watched it and they showed it to 10 mates, and then they might had a video <laughs> recorder, so a couple of them managed to duplicate oh it. Yeah. So people could get the tape and watch it, and it wasn't necessarily new. I felt like oh, it's, not, it's not brand new. Yeah. So at least if I sewed it shut in a cover, <laughs> you as the purchaser yep. know that you are getting the brand. If the, if the case was opened, right, it's, it's, it's going to be a forgery, yep. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's unreal. So yeah, that, that's how I, if you bought a case and it was sewn shut in the cover, you knew it was it was real. Yeah, that's so sick. Yeah, how how was distribution working then? Were you literally just um, were you literally just giving it to shops yourself? Or yeah, we'd, I'd did just you have go someone, around to the bike shops. Yeah. So I literally would just go and go door to door and and look. Over the years, the community was small, so you mm. knew the the people in the bike shops and the mountain bike, and you'd met them at the races, you'd met them at the events, mm-hmm. you knew. Kind of, and so you'd go into the shop and say, oh, I made a video. Would you would you take a couple of copies, or would you try and sell? And they might take two copies or five copies. Or, yeah, you know, there, it wasn't selling big numbers or anything like that. Yeah. So literally, yeah, just go door to door and selling them. Um, interstate, you know, again, traveling to the interstate events, you'd meet a few people interstate, so you had a couple. But otherwise, I'd just call. I'd get the yellow pages back in the day, the white page, and you'd yeah, look up bike shops and you'd just call them up. Yeah. And so would you take a video? Yeah. Um, but, you know, that grew over time. And then we ended up getting a distributor in Melbourne, um, okay. Platypus. Um, so over the years. It did get. But again, and, and they might take them. But I don't know. I felt like I was pretty small mm. 
to give another commission, another cut to someone. Like you made, yeah, true. There's no money in it. Nah. Yeah, there was no money in it. And to give it to someone else and to think you're selling extra thirty copies of versus yeah. making a few extra phone calls and trying to sell it yourself. True. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, it got to a point that Platypus they they yeah. did a good job by me. They're good guys. When did you start getting stuff shown on SBS and like TV and stuff like that? Because you had a bit up on there, didn't you? <sighs> well, the uh, people would get in touch with me, uh, mm-hmm. different TV stations or mm-hmm. whatever. I, I don't know where they'd come from because I had mountain bike footage and and no one else had mountain bike footage, and they could find me. Like we had Ripley's, believe it or not, True. get in touch to buy yeah, some yeah. footage and. And I'd have, you know, a, a crash or just a, a real extreme, something really mm-hmm. brutal kind of thing. And I had footage of it. And yeah. then people wanted to try and license and buy that. Oh, I just want that 10 seconds of that yeah, security right. guard getting smashed in the head <laughs> by the skate truck. It's, like, it's pretty horrible. Yeah. You know, I just want the footage of the guy crashing. It's like, it's like, oh, I don't know. But, yeah, they'd get in touch and different, um, you know, Maybe not so much with the local stuff with the TV stations, but Chili Factor came yes. along the line, yeah. and that was I don't know when around two thousand, mm, uh, and that was Darren really. Harvey. Yeah, so that was the first time mountain biking could really get on TV. That was a big boost. Like outside yeah. of video, um, he started Chili Factor, and that was you know extreme sports like mountain bike and BMX mm, could yeah. get put on TV. You know, surfing was probably on there. They had a little bit. But I reckon he he had a lot to do with exposing the sport, yeah, uh, to television more than more than what I did. But was it still kind of cool to, I guess, back then to get something on TV? Even now, like I had a thing with Grant get on SBS, I'm like, that's pretty sick. Yeah, like, oh, it was always a good buzz. Yeah, yeah. we we um, later down the track, we ended up um, distributing the broadcast of video so not the sale of physical videos okay but they would broadcast bad habits or yep. lust or something like that and so there was this uh, organization called resort sport network okay and they were through europe and they have all the ski resorts and all the rest yep. of it and so they would buy the leasing of the video and they'd play okay. it in their in in ground in-house movies yeah so one of their channels would be extreme oh, really? sports yeah right. and so that went to 20, 30 countries. That's unreal. Yeah. yeah. So they would play the videos. And so that was, they went, it's so many countries around. That one time they had this list. Mm. They had a list of all the countries that the videos that's played crazy. in. That's crazy. That was a pretty proud moment. That's unreal. But I, yeah. I've lost the list. Um, oh. But I had a mate, was, he was actually flying back from, uh, from overseas somewhere. It was on Singapore Airlines and he was watching himself in a Singapore <laughs> Airlines. There was a trials video or something yeah. like that. And that happened to be. You know, somehow where their reach of that broadcast went to, yeah, it was on an aeroplane and he was sitting on it. And he was That's so you know, cool. some young kid, like yeah. just some mouth like, right, he'd feel like a rock star. After oh, that. dude, yeah. That's, and that it's was like a good the, buzz. Yeah, things like that was, yeah, that was a good, proud moments. Oh, the, it's, yeah, because you're quite humble coming across, like in, as we're talking now. But f- even now to have something like that happen is, is pretty, pretty monumental for a lot of people. Like, you got to be proud of of what you've done and now what you're restarting up, right? Yeah, well, you know, you know what I've done, I've done. You know, that's kind of in the past. True. You know, yeah. I suppose I can't, you know, I can't live yeah. off that anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to to doing it again. I kind of recognise that I love doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you stop, you grow up, you have a family, you raise your kids, you try and pay the bills, do all the rest of it, and you yeah. kind of put your passions aside, maybe. Um, and now my kids are an age where maybe I can go and revisit, you know, those, yep. those passions again. Yeah. Is the dog being too annoying? Nah, or? she's all right. Um, what's it like? Have you been to any races like recently and, and started filming again? Or you, Yeah, you I've got of- to stop myself. Yeah. No, okay. Because I, 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 I love taking the photo. I've just got a new camera and mm-hmm. I've been to some of the, the state down who have popped out. There's a few of them, you know, a few mates might be going there. So yep. you'll. Pop down, have a look. I mean, I thought about racing. Yeah, you know, I raced last year at Wollonga. I did about yeah, a year see. ago. Yep. Um, on the e-bike. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, my e-bike. Um, but yeah, for to go back to the races, then you taking photos was was good because mm-hmm. that's pretty quick to take photos. Yep. Um, but as soon as I start taking video, to then try and edit and make a clip and do this. And yeah. I went and caught up with the boys at the beer and barbecue fest just recently, um, and I just got the new camera. 
I said, yeah, I'll come and take some photo and video. Yeah. And just the time it's spent to try and learn and get the photos and the and to try and edit again, it's real time yeah. consuming. Uh, and once I start, I'd want to make a good clip. So it's yeah. better not to start Sometimes, yeah. something like that at the minute. Yeah, I'm kind of maxing out my time elsewhere. Let's get to bring the mic up a little bit again, yeah. sorry. Um, but it's unreal. Like, So you've started 30 years ago and you're the only filmer there and now you go to a downhill race here and you've got six or seven kids with video cameras and phones and everything else and seeing what they're coming up with. Are you watching what these guys are doing now? And- yeah, look, the, the stuff comes on my the Instagram feed yeah. and, and the race stuff comes up. And look, I'm sorry, but to be honest, I don't – you see it. It, it all looks the same to me. I don't even mm. watch my own stuff. Like, yeah, fair to enough. be honest, like I, 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 I found myself trapped a couple of years ago watching stuff on okay. the internet. I was yeah. a, I was a passenger and I was just watching, mm. and, and I wasn't doing anything useful or productive with with my time except watching someone else do something. Yeah. So then I, you know, because I said, let's stop watching and start doing. You know, yeah, yeah, fair so enough. So now I don't, I don't tend to watch too much. That, no. But, but in saying that, even the latest movie, I mean, I watch the events, I watch the crank mm-hmm. works, I like watching the the races, yeah. and all. when yeah. they have good coverage, I love watching that yeah. live stuff or yeah. the replay if it's the next day or whatever. Um, but watching someone do a a local edit of them riding yeah. down the local hill, no matter how good you are, it's it's hard to make riding look good. Yeah, when you compare it to. The productions of Red Bull and what True, what yeah. the real impressive people are doing, mm. it's poles apart from making yeah. mountain biking look interesting. You know, yeah. like I tried to make mountain biking look interesting because no one had seen it, but now you've seen it, it's kind of been done to death. How do you True. how do you right. make it look any better than mm. just creating a more dramatic landscape? You know, hundred percent. Yeah, it's hard to diversify and become different now for sure. Like everything's been done so much, like it is hard to show Fox Creek, Fox Long, the millionth time. Like, how do I go on Everyone's shoot that Everyone's done. You know, you get a GoPro, you put the footage here, you put it yeah. footage there, you carry a drone camera, whatever. Yeah. You know, just to, to make something like that. I mean, you know, but in, in saying that, making Fox Long look good versus watching a, a World Cup event, mm-hmm. you know, they got huge budgets and they still can't True. make it look that good sometimes, <laughs> you know. They got drones and they got this and yeah. that. And, still you know, it kind of is what it is. I don't know, the- the heart in mountain biking is is for you, the rider, mm. doing the riding. Yeah, uh, true. And I don't know. You you can't really put that into video. It's hard to put it in. You know, yeah. It's hard to put into video. It maybe it was easier back then because, mm. I don't know, there was less of it to compare it to. Yeah, 100%. But nowadays it's, you know, it's it's in your head. It's in, yeah. you know, your eyes. Yeah. You know, the fun and the. I don't know. Even even recently, watching the footage of um, the Red Bull in Tassie, mm-hmm. you know, I can understand the scale of the features, yeah. but I just didn't think they did a great job of demonstrating the scale. You know, like yeah. park a bus under it or give us True. some yeah. real perspective mm. um, for something that's just just so incredible, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and it just makes it look like oh, we're just doing it. Like we're just Oh, next year we'll have to backflip it. It's like the biggest jump in the world, and next year <laughs> someone's going to have to backflip it. You know, yeah. like where does where does it stop? Jai Motherwell wants to backflip that ninety footer next year, and there's plenty of people telling him not to, <laughs> which is fair. But yeah, someone's going to do something. Uh, but that's again, that's in in the kids' heads nowadays. If, oh, yeah. if that's what you want to do, and if that's where you're at, then you've it. you've yeah. got to do it, and yeah. you've, you've got to be prepared to pay the price. Mm. You know. Um, and some people are, you know, yeah. ultimately. And if that's where your heart and your passion is, you just got to do it. If you think that's what you want to do and you can't yeah. sleep at night until you do it, well, well you've got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the attitude that reminds me a lot of, of Grant and, and Grant Allen. Like you filmed a lot with him and you filmed a lot with Marshy and stuff. Did a lot of their go get them attitude and stuff rub <laughs> off on you as well when you were filming and, and doing stuff with those guys? Yeah, a lot. We just had a really good group. Like, True. Yeah, we just had, and and again, probably all pretty similar attitudes. Mm-hmm. You know, is is she being annoying or do you want? No, nah, she's all right. I'll I'll take it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we we. I mean, Marsh and I were great mates. He had his mm. trials influence and his trials skills. Mm. The Mogs were two brothers that just used to like push each other, just yeah. just find a new limit. 
and Grant just liked to push himself just quietly by himself, and he could have yeah. done he could have done all by himself. You know, true. He, yeah. he didn't need he didn't any be different. Yeah. You know, I, I like to film it, and I like being in the group, and I think we all like being in the group because mm-hmm. we had that group. We could push each other. Yeah. Uh, d- just in just such a fun way. Yeah. You know, there was no, there was never any competition. Like no one was better than anyone for doing anything. You know, it's like mm-hmm. Marshy had his troll school. So we'd muck around. We had a troll set up in my backyard. So we would just <laughs> do trolls in the backyard. Yep. So everyone improved their balance skills and, and, mm. and bite handling skills in a, in a slow fashion, you know. Yeah. Um, and then we just fed off each other. We just yeah, go and amazing. do something, and we just ride and have fun. Mm-hmm. I like I, I filmed a lot of stuff, yeah. Um, but so much stuff we didn't film, and it was hard to put myself to the spotlight. Just stop! Like this is fucking <laughs> awesome. Yeah, <laughs> just film it. Yeah, and it was a, it was a it was a hard position to be in because you just want to be fun in the moment. Yeah, but then you'd also like to record it. Because yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Gone forever. Mm. <laughs> And you've recently decided to kind of start visiting these stories again with, with the podcast. Like, what was your thoughts behind starting that? I mean, what's it called first? And then, <laughs> well, still, I, at the moment, I've called it Volatile Revisioned. Yep. Um, yep. But I don't know if that's a permanent name. It was just, yeah. I just made a decision a couple of years ago to, to do something for the 30th anniversary. Yep. I didn't know what that was going to be. Yeah. Um, it, it, about a, I don't know, it's, it's taken about two years to get to this point. Like I, mm. I probably consciously made this decision two years ago and yep. it's taken two years to get to, you know, yep. what's come to form together in the last couple of weeks. Um, but first I just redigitized the old movies. Mm-hmm. That took a long period of time um, to get them up to find someone that could even remaster the tapes because <laughs> it was so old and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and then I just said, oh, look, I just want to post a video clip every night for 30 days. Like I just yeah. have some kind of, this was, a year. This was a year and a half ago. Mm. So just post a clip up every night for yeah thirty days and just see what see yeah. what you do from there. Um, so I did that, and then I just kept doing it. Mm. And like for the next year, I, th- I think it, I, there was a lot of shit going on in that time. We sold our house. We yeah. a lot of a lot of big things happening in my life. I said, no, I'm going to just post a video clip every night. Just try and be consistent. <laughs> yep. Um, so just try, and I maybe only missed I don't know a couple of days, three or four yeah. nights yeah. in a year That's of unreal. posting the video yeah. clip. Um, I've slowed down a bit now because this podcast thing's taken over. Yep. But that's that's only formed in the last I don't know six months. Yeah, you know to do that. But I thought I've, I know all these people. Um, we can just sit down and talk and tell all these stories. Yeah, for our you know our time. You know, I suppose. Mm. And look, if thirty people listen or fifty people <laughs> listen, if it's if it's our community and our little audience, and they get to hear a bit more about fucking Dean or yeah. Steve or Gran or you yeah. know, whatever. I think there's enough of us that would be interested. And I've loved talking to the guys. And so, yeah, yeah I've decided to turn into a podcast and and, and I'd, I'd like to keep doing it. Mm. I, I know so many people like bands, music. It's not just writers. Yeah. You know, I know 30 years is a long time to meet people um, and form a relationship and see how people grow and progress. Yeah. You know, like uh, Nathan Morris when his little kid Trigger, like Trigger's little kid, <laughs> yeah. no Bicycle yeah. Express, like. There's yeah, some, Trigger's got a kid there's now. Yeah. So many cool stories within this community. Yeah. And and maybe I can be a part of sharing that. I think it's um <laughs> important for like kind of showing where the sport came from to some of the young ones, because you know, Marshy might rock up to an elite race or Grant's out there doing dumb stuff in his bowhead and people see him doing that now, but they don't understand what they've done before and like you couldn't. No one knows that. Some of the young ones don't know. Yeah, Grant was in Rampage. Like, oh uh, yeah. Like, I mean, even years ago. Like, I've been in and out of the mountain bike scene. Like when the kids were younger. Sorry about the dog being a pain there. Right. Um, was uh, sorry. What was I saying? When uh, we'd go back to the races, and like you know, it's like Marshy's oh, there. And so, so and so and so and so. And you'd know, and the, you'd know. And then now you've gone out to a race as a as an older guy. I've mm. gone back out and done a few events, and no one knows anyone. And the big group of riders is that sixteen ish year yeah. old, and they just think they're the bee's knees. Yeah. Uh, and to them, they are. They've got an Instagram page and and all the rest of it. So you know, yeah, go yeah. you. Um, but yeah, they don't know who Marshy is, and but at the same time, you know, Marshy probably doesn't really doesn't care, care. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Still one of my favourite memories uh, of Marshy, though, is like he was at a national enduro series 
and it was it was his turn to go, and he's warming up in at the back of the, and he's ridden up past all these juniors. Endos does like a one eighty, um, nose pivot in front of all of them. Best nose wheelie I've ever seen in my life. Lands perfectly at the gate, sits on his seat, doesn't touch the ground with his feet or anything. Sits there, and everyone's just like gob, like mouth open. They're like, "Oh, your turn." Five seconds, and he just stood up like on his pedal. He never touched the ground, and all these kids are just like, "What just happened?" Like, yeah, uh, look, and again, and that's why hopefully I can maybe be a part of be a part of sharing mm. some of this because this Marshy was just so incredible in in his way, and mm. but there's so many other guys like. Yeah, for riding for what what they went on to do. Yeah, in helping the sport, in building a bike shop, in doing whatever. Yeah, they, going their different paths. Well, all yeah. these years later, um, and we all met through riding bikes, and you just get to see all these fucking incredible people. Yeah, you know, well, even like um Daryl, who's now the national brand manager for Canada. Molly at Molino. Yeah. yeah, well, he used to build tracks here at. There's a there's a downhill track in uh, Horsnells. Yeah, yeah, you know we can probably say all this stuff now. You weren't supposed to build and dig anywhere, but yeah. a couple of the cool, crazy tracks. You know, there's mm. good story and good history behind exactly. the people that built some of mm. these cool tracks that kids don't even know about. So, and they're probably too scared to ride them. You know, yeah. without riding their flash bike with their matching gloves and helmet and all the rest <laughs> of that. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a big fan of that. Do you think it's lost some of the fun in some of the, some of the industry or? Look, I can't comment. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a part of it. I'm not out yeah, there okay. yep. in amongst that anymore. I'm sure it's just as much fun for for mm-hmm. all of them and for them to compete each other, uh, to compete against each other at that age. It's only making them faster yeah. and better. You know yeah, where that 100%. leads to. You know whatever. Yeah. Um, but if it keeps them off their devices, you know, go and try and yeah. challenge your mate yeah. to see how fast he can go down the hill. You know? <laughs> no brakes. See how fast he can go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think, uh, I think often, you know, they maybe look a bit flashier mm. than what their skills are. Yeah. Um, but the good ones will still shine through. You oh, know? 100%. Yeah. yeah. There's a young lad from up, up north near, near me, and he's on a 2007 demo, like 26 inch thing, like wears whatever, and he's absolutely ripping. That's where you learn. You learn on the bay. You learn on a basic hardtail. Oh, no, it's a Julie. Oh, he's got yeah. a Julie at least. Yeah, yeah. but it's, uh, I think it almost weighs as much as him. Yeah. But like. Well, there's advantages to that too. Yeah. And he's, but he's out there and he's having fun and he's riding better than a lot of kids. And it's just like, it doesn't really matter as much about the gear. Like these kids with the passion always kind of trump it, I think. That was even, look, even, see, you know, back in the day, I'll say back in the day, like an old man, but Mm. back in like the early Wollonga races, you know, Mm. most of us rode on hard tails. Like yeah, there yeah. might have been, you know, Whitlock might have had a, a diamond back dual suspension. Maybe Oof. in the years gone past, yeah, you know, to Felix on a Turner. Like there's a couple mm. of guys that had some good jewelries. There's a couple of good G- GTs out there, um, but everyone just had to ride what what Look, they what's had. Available and what they and had, it, yeah. it wasn't even at the the high spec end. It wasn't that great. You just had to have the mm. the balls to ride over that terrain. And even then. <laughs> The rocks and the, the everything was nowhere near as gnarly as what it is yeah. today, but I reckon it's probably just as hard to ride fast back then with that equipment and that gear. I rode an uh, old ATX a few years ago, like a two thousand and one ish, like ATX. I was blown away with how hard everything was just to ride that on that thing. And it was like flow trails, and I'm like this is the scariest bike I've ever ridden in my life. And then you look at what um, Warner. Or like what they had. What all those guys are riding and it was the same bike and they're flying. Yeah. It's unreal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always just had a hard tail. I could never afford a dual mm. suspension bike. I spent all my money on cameras and, yeah. and get wasted my money in yeah. that direction. So I could only have a hard tail. But you know, you got I don't know how much trouble you got in your legs. You got more yeah, exactly. than eight inches in my yeah. legs. So that's yeah. enough. Yeah. What um I guess, like, what is the future for the podcast and, and for your videos and stuff? Are you, do you have much planned for, for what's going on with that? No, I, I no. really don't have no, a yeah. no, no real plan. Like, the plan was to, to launch something on the 31st. Like, mm-hmm. the goal was to do something yeah. on that date. And even, again, that date really doesn't mean anything to anyone. It's, it's mm. irrelevant to everyone, but it was a date that I had 
and I figured I'll use that yeah. as a as a starting point. Yeah, um, you know, a returning point. However, you want to look at it. Mm. Um, where it goes from here, I don't know. I just want to keep. I'm, I've got a, a big list of people I've already contacted to yeah, to cool. speak to. Yeah. Um. So the plan is to just start going through the list. Yeah. Um. And start talking to people. Yeah. It'd be nice to think I could do one a week, but I think that's a big push. You know, yeah. one a fortnight, or you know, it might yeah. just be somewhere in that that time frame. Mm. Um, I've spent a lot of time doing these. I've done f- the first five. I've interviewed Marshy, uh, Grant, Dean, Rowan, and Dwayne. Yeah. Um, that was to help me practice and learn yep. and, and put Get it out there. It. Look, I think what I've done turned out pretty good. Yeah. With all things 100%. considered. Um, but look, I've learned a lot. Mm. Um, where it goes to from here, I probably just keep doing it that way. Yeah. I've spent a fair bit of time putting video footage over the top of these guys, clips, yeah. these first five, uh, because I've got all the footage in yeah. my mind. I was going to look. Oh, I'm the right right man for the job here. You know, if you yeah. want some old footage, I've you got know, it. I've got it. Um, but it's really time consuming, yeah. and so I've just got to be careful about how much time I, yeah. I put into that because uh, this is just a part time. This is just a, yeah. a side hustle for me. Bit of fun, you know. Yeah. Um, but look, there's man. I know so many people that have got some cool stories about. Mm. The history of mountain biking and BMX, and you know who yeah. did the first flip, and who how did the how did the club start, yeah, and who were those? You know, get all those. Mm. If people are interested, and I'm sure there's enough people that are. 100. You know, what are the the facts behind? You know mm. how how this all kind of got got rolling, and I've got a bit of video footage to back it up too. How's learning all the new tech and editing software and everything else to go with it? How's that been? Learning the t- like learning the tech and everything is is okay. Uh, I've got right into AI. I've been looking right into <laughs> yeah. AI stuff for the last yeah. year. So I'm a big AI advocate, and I've I've been to some workshops, and people have shown me yeah, right. you know yeah. what to use and what to do. You know, being shown what to mm. do is one thing. Then going and applying it is another. Yeah. Um, and just the time it takes. But yeah. the biggest struggle for me has just been the file size of everything like my computer just shuts down <laughs> like i'm just buying yeah. external hard drives and it, it's it's not been a, a cheap exercise to try and no. do this um but you know i've bought these cameras that have all this 4k high quite quality so yeah. and, and i like i say i got no idea what that means but i do know that it means my computer's full <laughs> yeah. uh, yep uh, and Never i just need battle. to work on understanding that a bit better yep a hundred percent yeah, trust me, you will never, you can never have enough hard drives. Yeah, so I just keep doing that, and I'll get better at the filing and File resourcing yeah. and all that management yeah. sort of sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It is really cool to see, and it's been really fun to watch your old footage and seeing you get back into it. And yeah, it's been really, uh, really, really good. I've, yeah, I've been enjoying look, it's, it. it's been so like it, it, you have a bad day. Like this is, I've been doing this for you know, maybe a year and a half now trying to – and that's probably an hour or two a night, mm. you know, I'm spending on this. You know, the I say my kids, my family's got a bit older. I don't yep. need to be doing so much for the kids. So I got a bit of my time back. Mm. And if I've had a shitty day or whatever it is, I'm down just look forward to each day. I'm just going to watch this old video. And it puts yeah. me in a good mood. I listen to the music. I yeah. see the footage, yep. whatever it is. I probably spend too much time just watching more yeah. than, <laughs> clip than than posting it up. Yeah. Um, but it's been so, and it's been really cool to see the responses. Mm-hmm. And and some of them actually the most, the coolest features is some of the people that aren't here anymore. Like there's yeah. there's kids in the videos, there's kids, there's boys, you know, men, whatever they are. They're yeah. friends that are in these, and they're, and they're not here anymore, yeah. you know. And sometimes I post a video and I think, oh, this is going to be the best video. This is. Kavarik with the heavy music and everyone's mm. going to love this. He's just the fucking man, and and it doesn't get my use. There's not much of a response. But then there's you know I just film some bike shops. Oh, yeah. People like to see the bike shops or Troy's jumps, and and mm. everyone just just froths on. Yeah, man, it's so good because he was a, just a legend in the sport, and you just happen to have a bit of footage of him. Yeah, riding his trials. Uh, you That's know, Luke Weather. So there's true. rest in peace. All the guys that aren't mm. here with us anymore. You know, but it's been cool to see even just some of the family gets to. You know, see yeah, their really loved one it. again. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's for like, sure. Oh, and there he is. There's his yeah. face. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's unreal. Yeah. Might start wrapping wrapping things up a bit here. Uh, I kind of end with three questions for everyone. Yeah. Um, first one is like, what advice would you have to anyone who wants to get into like filming or wants to 
take on a new skill or, you know, become a media legend like yourself? Well, I don't know about a media legend, but <laughs> I, I think it applies to whatever you want to do. If mm. you really want to do it, you've just got to, you've just got to be all in. You know, yeah. you, you know, do it because you love it. If that's what you want to do, just do it. But you just got to be all in. You can't be half assed mm. about it. You can't, you know, think, oh maybe. You know, you're doing a drop. You can't, you know, True. think maybe I'm going to make. No, you've got to be committed. Mm. Um, so just follow, follow your passion. You know, if you've got the, if you've figured out what your passion is. Yep. Um, you've just got to go for it. Uh, but sometimes you've got to make that fit within the realities of life. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately. Yeah. But you shouldn't compromise. If, if you really want to do something, you should, you should go yeah. for it, you know. 100%. Map it out. Yeah. Take the time it takes and, and try and do it. Is there anything you would have uh, done differently or anything you regret doing? Or Look, I don't think I have any regrets. And look, yeah. there's plenty of things you do differently, but then that wouldn't make you the person that you <laughs> yeah. are today. So, look, I, I look back at everything. It's just part of the learning process and you yeah. learn a lesson from whatever you do, whether it works or whether it doesn't. Um, yeah. Some of the hardest lessons come from, you know, the failures, yeah. but then that makes you into the person you are today. Exactly, yeah. One of my new favourite sayings is uh, fail fast. So make sure you get all your failures done and you learn quicker. And Yeah, yeah. I tell my kids, I've, wrong. I build pools now. I've got my lad helping me. So make all the mistakes you want, you know. Yeah. <laughs> just don't hurt, don't do any serious injury. Yeah. They just make mistakes and that's the best way to learn. You 100%. Know? Yeah. Um, last one seems to be the hardest for a lot of people, but uh, if you're lacking the motivation to, say, get up and do an edit or – record a f- podcast or, you know, go build a pool. Is there anything you do to get motivated, like to listen to any music or is there any <laughs> r- ritual? Or- <laughs> well, can I say that I'll, I'll go and smoke a bit of pot? You probably can't <laughs> yeah, say that, nah, can it's, you? it's all good. <laughs> yeah, that helps me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but music, music is yeah. the music's a big motivator. Yeah. Um, <laughs> might smoke <laughs> a bit of pot every now and then. <laughs> that helps the creative juices flowing. But, but music's good. And in the last year, just listening to podcasts, like yeah. if 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 I've been in, you know, lacking the motivation, down in the dumps, whatever, personal, business, whatever reason, mm. uh, I've gone and found a podcast, find someone that's maybe motivation, listen to someone else that's that's mm. done it and been there before. You know, all the resources are out there. You got yeah. a phone, you can you can listen to someone that's motivation motivational and in, inspirational for you. And if you go and search them out, yeah. sometimes that just gets you going. Maybe you just need that in the morning. Yeah. Just get a little bit of a kickstart. Listen to David Goggins. <laughs> get your ass in the, <laughs> the gear. Goggins, yeah. And then, you know, move on to something more appropriate. Mm. Um, 100%. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Love that answer. That's the best one yet. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks so much for coming on. Um, yeah, as I said, like it's been amazing to, to finally sit down and talk to you, especially after watching all your videos and high school and seeing you document everything. So Yeah, cool. No, it's great to catch up and it sounds like you're maybe moving in a different direction. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going into video and you're going into podcasting. Yeah, so it's yeah. a different <laughs> tag team. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, mate. Thank you so much. Good one. Thank you. Cheers, mate. There we go, guys. What an absolutely epic episode. Um Stoked to have a part of history, a part of the mountain bike industry from 30 years ago, making an appearance on here. Uh, Zoli, as he said, has started a new podcast, uh, Volatile Revisioned, where he's kind of chatting to a few older buddies and some people that made some history in the sport. So definitely go check it out. Without these guys, we wouldn't be riding what we are today and, you know, have the scene that we've got today. So make sure you study up on some history and, you know, have a listen to it. Anyway, uh, until the next episode, go out and have a bunch of fun. Um, Only a couple more of these left, so make sure you listen to them all. Thanks.